Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome again to uh, Growing in Grace growingandgrace.org. You'll find past archived programs on there. I'm Mike, along with Joel, as we continue on our series about the new covenant. Really one of the most crucial things for us to understand as, as new believers, new creations in Christ. And and yet, uh, the religious world, eh, you don't hear quite that much about it, because usually in the religious world, uh, what is religion really all about? It's, it's all about us trying to improve ourselves and become more acceptable to God. Whereas Christianity, true Christianity, the message of the gospel, is everything that God did through Jesus Christ on our behalf, and there's nothing that we can add to something that is already finished. So, uh, Joel, hey, hope you're doing okay, man. Yeah, doing well. And this, uh, you know, this all this New Covenant talk, uh, you know, sometimes uh, over the years we've heard from people who have come across our podcast uh, because they've been searching the Internet for the difference between the Old Covenant and the New Covenant. Or they'll they'll hear something somewhere, maybe in church, maybe on the radio, or somewhere in, in their Christian world, they'll hear something, and they'll search it out, and they'll find us talking about this. And in many cases, we've been told, this is the first time we've ever heard anybody tell us this. It's the first time we've ever heard anything like this. Because in many churches, you do hear a mixture. You don't hear people separating out the two covenants, calling the old covenant what it is. It had a purpose, and uh, it, it was meant to be there, but it had a purpose in pointing to the new covenant. And then this new covenant in which we now stand, we're the beneficiaries of this covenant that, that God made with himself, and then he brought us into it. So much of this isn't taught in the church, and so we do feel it's on our hearts, and we feel it's very important to continue to point out the differences and to uh, lift up this new and glorious covenant f- for what it is. Uh, God is so good to us in, in doing this for us, making it all about his work, his finished work, and not about what we do. And so continuing on here, we've been talking in Hebrews 7, Hebrews 8, uh, we were last week talking about the words of Jeremiah that the writer of Hebrews quoted. Uh, we talked about how he said, uh, The days are coming, says the Lord. I'll make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Cap, you talked a little bit about that and how you know some people are still waiting for this. Uh, well, I, I forgot how you worded it, but it's this this whole idea that this new covenant isn't isn't a continuation of the old. There's this new covenant that God is making with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. And the thing is, very important, is that, uh, and this isn't something that you said last week, but very important, is that, so some people say that Gentiles aren't part of this covenant because it's only for the house of Israel and the house of Judah. But there's so much in what Jesus says, there's so much in what Paul says that shows us that as Gentiles, we that is, non-Jews, people who aren't of Israel, who aren't of Judah, we have been brought into this covenant. We never had a covenant. We were without a covenant beforehand. We were without God and without hope in this world, Paul says. And then God let us into this covenant. And so we're the beneficiaries too, not just Israel and Judah, but anybody, whosoever will. And so... uh, I'll uh, pass it on to you. Jeremiah talks about this covenant that I'll make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I'll put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts. I will be their God. They shall be my people. And we'll see where this goes today. Yeah, again, religious scholars who argue that the new covenant was to be made with the house of Israel. And the reason that the new covenant hasn't been uh, fully enacted yet is because they haven't accepted the terms of the agreement. Those who think that way really haven't understood some of what Jesus said. Jesus made it clear that Israel's rejection of of Christ, who is the new covenant, 
would not hold back the will of God because the new arrangement, again, as we said last week, it would not be made with fallen man, not you, not me, not any of us, not the nation of Israel, but it would be made with the Messiah who would represent Israel as the mediator of that, that, that because he, he's the one who would fulfill the law and complete the, the requirement that the old covenant demanded, Jesus the mediator for Israel. So the agreement, so to speak, would simply be to believe in Christ from that point forward. It's not anything, it's, it's not our, our salvation and our place in this new covenant is not dependent upon anybody other than Jesus Christ and what he has already accomplished. So the agreement, so to speak, is simply to believe in Christ. But part of the the mystery that would be revealed after the cross is that we non-Jewish people, we Gentiles, would also be invited into the house of God. Both Jew and Gentile would be merged together as one man. Those are things that we've talked about in the past here on Growing in Grace, and it's just coming to light in, in a different uh, from a different perspective and a different angle now as we as we weed through some of this stuff in Hebrews about about the new covenant. But as you were saying, Joel, in, in Hebrews 8, again, quoting from Jeremiah is what's going on here. Hebrews 8, starting with verse 8, uh, well, really uh, 7 and 8, all the way through verse 12, almost all the way through the end of uh, the chapter 8, basically. He's basically quoting Jeremiah here about, about this new covenant. But there's something that the writer of Hebrews tweaks just the least little bit in this passage that came from from Jeremiah. And he says this, For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my laws into their minds, and I will write them on their hearts. I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall not teach everyone his own citizen, and everyone his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for all will know me. So this, where, where was the tweak? Jeremiah from his perspective, he, he wrote, I will put my law into their minds, whereas the writer of Hebrews said, I will put my laws into their minds. And you know what, Joel, this, this is the amazing thing about the covenants and the gospel of grace is that there are hundreds, well over a hundred references looking back, reflecting back on the old law. You'll find into the hundreds of references on the law in the New Testament. But only twice do we find the phrase, my laws. And that's here in Hebrews 8, and it's repeated in Hebrews 10 in the same context. Um, So what is God talking about here if he's not referring back to the law that came through Moses? That's a good question, Cap. I really don't know. No, I'm just kidding. (laughs) (laughs) But I, I do know what many in the church will say. Uh, he's talking about the Ten Commandments. You know, the, the, see, now in Christ, the Ten Commandments are on our minds and hearts. And so, uh, well, is the uh, is the Sabbath day in your mind and in your heart? Do you keep the Sabbath? <laughs> and well, uh, <laughs> well, no, not really. But and so it's really there are just nine. But then, if we talk about like what you were saying, the law of God singular word law was made up of 613 commandments that's the law of god and so when we're talking about uh, how um, the writer of hebrews quotes uh, jeremiah but kind of tweaks it like you say i will put my laws in their mind and write them on their hearts and 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 elsewhere we find in paul's writings we're not under the law we're under grace if you keep one law, you're bound to keep them all. Like if you're circumcised, you're, you're bound to keep the whole law, all of it, all 613 commandments. And so if, if this is what is written on our minds and hearts, you know, the, the law of God, then we're looking at 613 commandments that cannot be separated. We've talked about that in the past, too, that the law of God is a package deal. It's, it's a package. You, you, if you can't break them up, although theologians and people in the church have tried to do that. We've got the ceremonial laws. We've got the moral laws. They, we break them up into these categories when there is no such category, no, no such categorization in the Bible. It's the law. And so what is 
written on our minds and written on our hearts. In Christ, it's not the moral law. It's not the ceremonial law. It's not the sacrificial laws. It's, it's none of that, but it's, well, Cap, I know that you've talked about this before, so what say you? What is written on our hearts? Well, you're right. I mean, uh, you know, in the book of Romans, we, we, we have now been described as being uh, under the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Paul also talked about the, the law of faith. You, you could probably uh, make a case for the law of love, but the law of liberty is something that James referred to. Mm-hmm. So these are, these are technically, so quote unquote, new laws that contrast the old law of works that came with that package of 613 commands and statutes. You can't just take 10 and apply them and say these, these are what are written on our hearts. Whether they were written on stone or not, you, you can't. Those were the old covenant. We're in something new and different. Remember, if, if it's different than uh, the beginning of Hebrews 8 there, th- this covenant would be different than the one I made with your fathers when you came out of Egypt. Well, what, what did God give them when they came out of Egypt? He gave them the Ten Commandments and, and 600 other laws. <laughs> so, those are not the laws written on our hearts. Remember all the things that Paul said about the law, how the law, the strength of sin was the law, that it was the law and the commandments that actually caused sin to increase in us. So, that's another reason why we know it's not those old laws that are written on our hearts. It's something new and different. And I know somebody's going to say, well, don't you just think we should... The world would be a better place if we all just kept the Ten Commandments. Um, and uh, I would, I, you know, this would have been hard for me to say 15 years ago to somebody. But now that I am gaining a greater understanding of it, my answer would be no. We're in a different covenant. The old didn't work. It doesn't work trying to keep th- those commands. It increases sin. It, it has the opposite effect. It, it brings death, not life. I'm I'm not bad mouthing the law here. I'm just saying that it, it didn't work for us, and so what? Wh- where are we then? We're in a place of of the ministry of the Spirit. What used to have glory under the old way no longer has glory, because the glory of the ministry of the Spirit, something new and different, far surpasses that. So we now live by the ministry of the Spirit, and it's the fruit of the Spirit now indwelling us and flowing through us, and that is what we should be living by, the, the fruit of, of the Spirit and the ministry of the Holy Spirit and the finished work of Jesus Christ resting in that because the old law did not work. And that's why I think we see a tweak with the writer of Hebrews saying, my laws, plural. Yeah, because you know the law can't produce life. But in these things that you're talking about, there's, there's plenty of life in those things. So, continuing on with this passage, we'll have to get into this next week. I know we said we would talk about how the Old Covenant was made obsolete. Uh, We'll do that next week. And then, uh, looking ahead, in the Old Covenant, God was looking ahead and He promised the New Covenant, and He said, I will remember their sins no more. So the Old Covenant made obsolete. God remembering our sins no more. That's next week, right here on Growing in Grace at growinginggrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.